Hello, my name's Josh, and we've been talking a little bit about how some birds can take advantage of wildfires. So we're here with museum expert, Dr. Alex Bond, to explore this a bit more. So first of all, Alex, um, it's quite an extraordinary story, really, about how some birds of prey are able to use wildfires to their advantage. I was wondering if you could talk us through a bit more about this behavior and some of the species that are involved in this. Yeah, it's really fascinating. And it's something that's been known in traditional communities in Australia for, well, since time immemorial. Um, and we're just sort of catching up in terms of Western science. So we've got birds of prey. We've got three examples here. We've got the brown falcon. We've got the black kite and the whistling kite. Um, we'll pick up sticks from burning fires and carry them up to a kilometer away, uh, and drop them to start a new fire, which will then drive out their prey, which is really extraordinary behavior. That is amazing. And um, do we, so they're doing this primarily as like a hunting behavior, is that what we think? Exactly, exactly. So these birds have coexisted with bushfires, well, forever, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and so they've, they've learned that this is something that they can do and that it's obviously beneficial to them. And what are they preying on, I guess? I mean, obviously they're birds of prey, so. <laughs> other, other animals, presumably, but yeah, how are they, what are they hunting and what are they looking for? Yeah, so it'll be things like uh, small mammals, birds, um, and even some insects and maybe even reptiles. Mm -hmm. And so we've got these three different species. I was wondering if you could talk a bit more about like, you know, where they live and sort of, I mean, obviously Northern Australia, but <laughs> their distributions and that kind of thing. Um, yeah, so they're, they're pretty widely distributed in Australia. You know, brown, brown falcon over there on the left is, is pretty widely distributed. One of the more common birds of prey that we see in Australia. Um, it's it's great to see them. Mask on it, like yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll see them, you know, driving across the roads. Um, black kite again, you know, pretty widely distributed, especially sort of in the, in the north and east. Uh, and whistling kites as well. Yeah. Um, and do we know, first of all, why just these three species? Is that, does anyone uh, know this? No, ultimately no. Yeah. Um, you know, other species may do it and it's just not been observed. Um, you know, observing birds doing this is obviously very tricky because you're in a bushfire situation. <laughs> um, so there may be other species that do it or it may be that uh, these have, have learned you know, independently. Mm. Yeah, great question. And from what I understand so far, it's only been observed from north Australia as well, um, you would have thought that, you know, bushfires have happened in other places. Other birds of prey might have learned how to do it. It's quite interesting, isn't it? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So bushfires or wildfires are, you know, a staple of ecological succession. They're a natural part of the cycle of, you know, a lot of places, uh, you know, especially in you know, North and South America mm -hmm. uh, and in Australia. But yeah, for some reason, these are the mm -hmm. ones that we seem do that. That's a cool ornithological mystery, that isn't it? Yeah. Maybe there are other birds doing it. We just haven't. We don't know. There, there quite well would be. You know, um, it's it's not beyond the realm of possibility. That's amazing. Um, but obviously, bushfires can be um, and often are seen as being quite devastating, um, particularly to a lot of wildlife. Um, I was wondering if you could talk us through some other examples of birds which maybe benefit or maybe you know are affected by sort of huge raging bushfires, I guess, destroying their habitats and you know where they live. Yeah. So, you know, the, the challenge that we have or the challenge that exists for a lot of birds with, with wildfire, bushfire these days is how we currently suppress that fire. Mm -hmm. And so that leads often to sort of the buildup of fuel loads, um, which results in these, you know, huge, massive, massive fires, which are only going to get worse with climate change. So, you know, the black summer in Australia a couple of years ago yeah. was just absolutely devastating. And so we've got, we've got three examples here of not birds of prey, but, mm -hmm. um, but other songbirds from Australia that have three really different responses. Mm -hmm. So to start off, we've got this fellow here, this which is, delightful is little one. This, is, this is a striated partalote. Okay. Um, and after fires, they will start to increase. Mm. So they you know, take advantage of uh, this newly created habitat, isn't quite the right word, but this newly altered habitat. Um, and, and we'll just, and we'll go up and up and up and up and up. How are they taking advantage of it? Is it food? Is it? Exactly. So some, some species will be sort of early succession. Okay. So when a fire goes through an area, obviously there's a lot of vegetation regrowth, um, and whole communities will change, you know, insects and vertebrates. Um, and so that's where these guys come mm -hmm. in as, as sort of insectivorous. Almost, I mean, benefit is probably maybe not quite the right word, but they're almost benefiting from the result of the wildfires. That... Oh, they're absolutely yeah, benefiting. Yeah. That is absolutely the right word. Um, and then you've got species like, like this fella here, which is a golden whistler. Um, and after a, after a wildfire, they'll be sort of at the same sort of, you know, level of abundance. But then at some stage, they'll just go up and up and up, and then they'll peak and then they'll come back down. Hmm. So they're sort of a slightly later succession species where they, they don't come in right after a bushfire, 
They don't seem to be particularly negatively affected. Mm. Um, but when you get that sort of initial recovery, that's when these guys start to move in. So it's obviously something maybe a couple of weeks after the bushfire that is, you know, they're able to take advantage on then. I mean, it will be longer than weeks. It'll okay. be, you know, sort of in, in the months to yeah, years afterwards oh, um, that you'll cool. see these guys come in. And then you've got something like a red cap robin, which is just such a stunning <laughs> looking bird, isn't it? That's so jazzy. Uh, they have no response whatsoever. So they seem to be largely unaffected mm. by bushfire. Hmm. Wow, so there's like three different, I guess, yeah, resulting strategies of how they react to the bushfire. Exactly, and every species will have, you know, its own response. Some, some are those like early succession species, like the pardalote. Mm -hmm. Some will will decline, obviously, mm -hmm. as, as their, you know, their prey is driven out. Um, and then some, like the robin, will just carry on, uh, <laughs> almost as if nothing's happened. Doing what it's always <laughs> always done, exactly. Um, and I guess it would be sort of, um, you have to mention the fact that, as you touched upon before, you know, bushfires are only expected to increase in their frequency and severity um, as climate crisis continues to sort of bite and, you know, grow. Um, how do we think that is going to impact sort of birds and the wildlife as a result? Yeah, that's a really tricky one um, because there's, you know, the frequency and intensity of bushfires or wildfires, but then there's also our response to them and how we manage you know, things like fuel load, how we incorporate indigenous knowledge like cultural burning um, into, these, into these processes. And so, you know, and every, and every species will respond a little bit differently. Yeah. So, you know, in terms of what it might look like in 50 or 100 years, it's really, really hard to say because there's that ecological element of, you know, the fires and, and the ecosystems they're in, but then there's also the people element. Mm. Mm. And I guess that's probably the case with quite a lot of sort of the changes that are going on with the environment at the moment. Isn't it? We sort of, things will change, we may, may not be able to say how, and some things will do well and some things will maybe do less well. Exactly, exactly. And I think bushfires is a great example of that. Well, thank you so much for talking us through some of these examples. Um, it was an absolute pleasure. Oh, thanks for having me. I hope you enjoyed learning about how wildfires affect different birds in different ways. And if you did, then let us know in the comments below. And if you want to get more great natural history content, then don't forget to like and subscribe.